What's up everyone and welcome back to Res Youth TV. My name is Autumn and we are so excited you are joining us today. But before we jump into today's service, I need you guys to do two things for me. One, like, subscribe, and share this out with someone you know. Trust me, you guys are not gonna wanna miss this. And number two, it's spring break. So type something in the comments that you guys have planned for the week. Well, we have an awesome service plan for you. We have praise and worship, some games, and a challenging word from Pastor Shelby. It's getting ready to get real, y'all. So before we jump into the service, let's join together in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another week. Thank you for bringing us this far. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us that we're still able to gather virtually, Lord God. Lord, as we bring the word today, I just ask that you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Continue to watch over us all. Keep us, Lord God. Open our hearts and our minds to receive a word from you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, let's get into this service. Come on, you guys. Join in with me to this wonderful tune. Oh 
another challenge. This week's challenge is called Kiss and Tell. The object of the game is blindfolded. Each participant must guess what the objects are. So they have to, they can smell it, touch it, kiss it, and then they have to tell us what it is. Um, today we have Jolena and MJ and my lovely assistant Dwayne helping. Uh, are you guys ready? Yes, they are. All right. So we have about three items each. And then you guys, I have a bonus item for you. I'm gonna give both of you to see if you guess it, so. All right, let's jump in. Okay, here is your first item right here. Right here? Yeah. You can smell it. Oh, this is a rose, chocolate rose. Oh, good What's job. That? Okay, but that is part of it. There's another part of it. Jolena got one. Is this a, a ring on Okay, here. Yes, It's a cap on it. Okay. That's so you got that one right. All right. It's a slime. This is the other one. Slime. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to taste it? No. <laughs> okay. Yes, good job. Well, taste it or you good? I'm good. This is right? Yeah. Right. What about this? It's kind of in the foot. That's what this is. Is it? Yes. yes. And yes. You want to taste it? Yes, good job. Jolita got all of hers right. He got two of, two of the three this far. Hold on, hold your hand Yeah, There you go. Okay. I'm going to. Okay, the bonus one, though, you got to touch it. Yeah, how you know? Oh. <laughs> You <laughs> guessed it right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can let it go. I get it. Good job. Okay, y'all. So this is the last one. Right here? Put your hand in the bag and grab one. Swag. <laughs> 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 Alright, y'all. Take it. You got it. You got it. Okay, you got it. What is this? This is prunes. Is this a raisin? This is a date of prunes. <laughs> this is a raisin. <laughs> I don't want it. Jolena, you are good. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. You all right, guys. They got it all right. Yes. Good job. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. Yes. 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 I don't know about you, but I am excited to be here on today and every Saturday because it always gets even better. So what a great ride we've been on so far. Uh, we are now actually at over 100 subscribers to our channel. Let the church say amen. <laughs> yeah. But no, if you are one of the hundred or so, uh, we want to thank God for you. Um, and we pray that you continue to be blessed by what it is we share through this channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed uh, and you want to be in that number, as they say, well, there's no time like the present. 
So go ahead, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for me. Uh, we want to be able to consistently reach as many people as possible with the unique way we do so week in and week out. So once you subscribe, uh, then don't be selfish with it. Uh, go ahead and share it with somebody else. What a great way uh, to share God's word, to share God's love, and to share your walk. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, um, it's the first Saturday of the month, y'all, which means, that's right, today we begin a brand new series. But we have a problem. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that I can tell you what it's about. Uh, I mean, this, this is a church setting, right? I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to offend anyone or, or cause someone to, to log off or, or unsubscribe. So, yeah, maybe I'll just, um, I'll just keep it to myself. You know, just kind of keep it on the low. No? N no, you, you think I should just say it? Okay, okay. Uh, but I'm just gonna whisper it. I'm just gonna whisper it uh, because I, I just, I just don't, I just don't feel comfortable. Um, so here we go. Uh, this month's series, we're gonna be talking about dating and S. I said it. I said it. I said it. I, I said it. sex. Now I'm joking. But a joke is only funny if there's some truth to it. And unfortunately, many of us, in the same way I couldn't even say the word out loud, barely spell it, have trouble communicating about sex. And so instead of talking about it, We'll just go out and explore and experiment on our own with no real foundation. And then keep to ourselves or on the low, the things that we either have done or are thinking about doing for fear of judgment, ridicule, and or embarrassment. Why? Because us perfect Christians mm -hmm, have deemed the topic of sex and dating being discussed in the church as taboo. Mm -mm, nope, nope, y'all don't, I don't wanna hear that. Don't talk about that up in here. No, y'all talk about that on your own time. And we'll talk about everything else but that while the world is talking about nothing but that. And then we wonder why there's so many fake Christians. Well, could it be because we don't talk about and help them address the real issues that plague us each and every day as fleshly beings? Well, praise be to God that we have a pastor in Pastor Brown who is anything but fake and encourages us to be real, to be authentic and keep it 100. So that's what we're going to do today and over the next few weeks I'm going to be uh, doing a little bit more talking and teaching than preaching, but we're going to go beyond the usual normal limits of church. We're going to do something new, something uh, that some would even say is radical and push the envelope and talk about sex and dating in church. Matter of fact, why don't, why don't you go ahead and type that in the comment section. Push the envelope. Uh, push the envelope. Yeah, yeah, y'all gas me up. Turn me up. Turn me up. Turn me up. Because that is the title of this series and the title of tonight's message. The first installment of the Push the Envelope series is Give It Up. Give It Up. Now, now some of y'all, some of y'all didn't already Check out, oh Lord, did Pastor Shelby just say that? Don't worry, it'll make sense in just one second. Let's go to the book of Romans, Romans, Romans. Uh, maybe you've heard it before, Romans chapter 12, verses one and two. It says, <clears throat> therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies, give it up, as a living sacrifice, 
holy and pleasing to God. For this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Give it up. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Give it up. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, perfect will. And so number one, number one, when giving it up, I have to understand that it will be challenging. It will be challenging to give it up. First one says uh, to offer your bodies as a what? Living sacrifice. Come on, come on. Say, say it with me in the chat. It's a sacrifice. Sacrifice meaning to uh, give up something of value to me. To offer my body as a living sacrifice. Now, do me a favor, do me a favor, and look at the very first word of our scripture. It says, therefore. Now, that's an awfully uh, random word to just start a sentence with out of the blue, right? Well, it's not just out of the blue. I I know it's the first word of the the chapter, but when you see the word, therefore, it indicates that there was something before it. Something that is the reason as to why you're reading what you're about to read. You did not clean your room reasoning. Therefore, you cannot go out to the movies. You did not do your work or show your work reasoning. Therefore, you will get a zero on the assignment. And so what is the reasoning as to why we should offer our bodies, give it up, to God. I'm so glad you asked. Romans chapter 11, verse 36, uh, the verse right before our scripture for today says, for from him and through him and to him are all things. Let Let me say it one more time. For from him and through him are all the things we both need and want. We often enter into relationships, both dating or sexual, because we are looking for something in someone that that someone simply can't give. Therefore, sometimes we feel like the cost in order to get that thing, whatever it may be, is compromising our standards, our morals, our faith, and ultimately, we end up giving it up. Well, I gave them my attention. He slid in my DMs, and so I I messaged him back, you know. Or you know what? Yeah, man, you know, I left a couple comments on her pictures, you know what I'm saying? But they're still not quite content with you. I gave them my time. We hung out and and we FaceTimed and we text all day and all night, but they're still not quite satisfied. So on Valentine's Day or their birthday or or, or our month anniversary, I don't know if y'all still do that or not, but I spent my money or my parents' money to give them things that I thought for sure would make them forever want to be with me, but I still don't know if they're completely satisfied with me and won't go out and be satisfied with or by someone else. So I know what I'll do. I'll give it up. I'll I'll give them my body. That'll keep them. Mm -hmm. And so now you've sacrificed your time, your attention, your money, and your body on something and someone that you just knew was a sure thing, that you knew would surely satisfy your need and give you the thing that's been missing, and they ain't even sure about you. It's tough. It's tough to go through all that and have given someone so much of you and your life only to come up short. But it's a sacrifice, right? A sacrifice and challenge that you take on all the time 
for people who ultimately can't give you all that you need. We have to get to the point to where we understand that from him and only him come all things and stop waiting until we are in a life or death situation before we decide to give it up to God and give him our attention, our time, our money and our bodies and allow him to be Lord over every area of our lives. Yes, even our dating lives and sex lives, because God wants a living sacrifice. For the Bible says, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life must ultimately lose it. Matthew 16, verse 24 and 25. So you can do it, but I'd be lying if I said it's not going to be a challenge. So when giving it up, giving it up, uh, not only will it be challenging, but then I have to watch where I'm channeling, channeling, where I'm channeling it and my energy. For the text says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. What? Holy and pleasing or acceptable to God. Not to Bay, but to God. So first of all, first of all, uh, to be holy mm -hmm, means to be set apart, uh, to stand out, to be different. The Bible says that you are a chosen people and a royal priesthood. So why is it that if I go on your Instagram, your Snapchat, your TikTok, your OnlyFans, yes, I said it, you look like all the other common folk doing the, the bus it challenge. I ain't gonna do it. Bus it, bus it, bus it, bus it. Is you? No. Only thing you should be busting is tables or a move. And so you'll take that challenge, but won't challenge yourself to be a living sacrifice for God. Or maybe you're not doing all that. You're, you're not real uh, down with the challenges, but you're showing a little too much of your body, adi, 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 to the world and on social media. And I'm not just talking about girls, it's the guys too. Trust me, I know because I used to take little pics of myself in front of the mirror with my phone and uh, lifting my shirt up, trying to flex my little four abs, right? <laughs> and then we wonder why when dating someone that all they want to do is lust after the body that you showed them online. Or, or now you're sad and depressed and feel less than because your butt's not getting big. Or you don't have as much body body as everyone else. And so you'll change things about the way you look because someone you like doesn't like that. That's not what you see all the guys liking on social media. Or you won't talk to certain people because you don't feel attractive enough. Well, let me tell you something. If that person doesn't like you for you, then you don't want to be with them anyways. Let me remind you that God made you. God made you attractive young men and women just the way you are. I used to have a shirt when I was little that said, I know I'm special because God don't make no junk. Everything God does is good. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And even at that, the Bible also tells us that guess what? Beauty is fleeting. But a woman who Fears the Lord, she shall be praised. The, the steps of a good man, not a good looking man, but a good man are ordered by God. So stop worrying about being pleasing and acceptable to every eye online and worry about living a life that's pleasing and acceptable to God. Stop letting opinions and people and music and social media diminish the value of your body. You don't give something of value to just anybody. Your body was not meant for everybody. No, your body belongs to God, the work of God, and one day your husband or your wife. That's it. 
For the Bible says in Genesis 2.24 that this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his what? Wife. And they become one flesh. Meaning not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend, not your boo, not bae, not baby, sugar, sweet thing, not your sex buddy, not your friend with benefits, not even if they're listed as wifey in your phone. If they are not your legal husband or your wife, you should not be channeling or presenting your body towards them, but to God and God alone. So when giving it up, giving it up, uh, we have to understand that it will be challenging. We have to watch where and how we channel it. But then number three, number three, when giving it up, we have to understand that it can be life changing. Giving it up can be life changing. Verse two in our text says, uh, do not conform any longer. Change it up to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. For as the mind goes, the body will follow. So there's a song out right now uh, by uh, Lil TJ. Maybe, maybe, maybe you've heard of him. Uh, but the song is called uh, Calling My Phone. I know some of y'all singing it right now. Um, but for those of you who don't know, the chorus says, I can get you on my mind. I can get you on my mind. I can get you on my mind. And it says that over and over and over again, right? It's actually kind of in my mind. Can't get the song off my mind. Uh, uh, but the song and this message took me back to when I was your age, when I was 16. I had, had myself a little girlfriend. Uh, and we were together for almost three years a long time, right? And so I just knew, I knew we were going to be together forever. And well, this ain't from her. But throughout that time, like the song, she what? Consumed my mind. And in turn, everything else. And so I spent all my free time over there. Anytime after basketball practice, before basketball practice, on the week, I was over there all the time. I spent all my little SeaWorld paycheck on her. I mean, she was my everything. So much so that I even started to resent my own mother for trying to limit the time I could see her. And so I had given this girl that I met online, MySpace, by the way, y'all know nothing about that. Uh, But I had given her my time my attention, my money, my energy, my body. And now I'm about to sacrifice a relationship with my mother too. All because she consumed my mind and had me thinking that nothing and no one else mattered. Dating and having sex outside of marriage, if you're not careful, will do that to you too. It will control your mind And have you thinking that that person is it, that those uh, few moments of pleasure is it. The only it that matters. Can't nobody or nothing make you feel like that. And ultimately, you end up turning your back on those who love you. You end up turning your back on the ones who loved you first, uh, those who loved you uh, longer than three years, the ones who always looked beyond your faults and saw your needs. And these relationships that seem perfect in your mind, without even realizing it, cause chaos all around you. But when you give your mind to God by renewing it daily with God's word and God's ways and what he says is good. Isaiah 26 and three says that he'll keep you in perfect peace. So you won't uh, be tripping over stuff that doesn't even matter. You won't neglect people that really do matter. You uh, won't, uh, won't have you missing out on someone special just because they don't look like what the world has deemed as 
sexy or mistreating someone that's special because they don't want to do what everyone else is doing and have sex. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What would Christ think about how you interact in your relationships? Things you do behind closed door when nobody else is watching. That's the barometer that can create some change. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with dating and getting to know a young man or a young woman and building a keyword friendly relationship where you experience what it's like to court. But when you begin to be transformed into their image and the image of the world more than the image of God, then we have a problem. You can't just be the change, but you got to push the envelope and do some changing. So again, again, giving it up is challenging. I have to watch where I'm channeling. What has uh, control of my mind can be life changing. And lastly, lastly, when I've given God my body and I'm giving God my mind, then nothing is left to change. Nothing's left to chance. I mean, come on, come on. That's the reason why some of you won't even go and talk to the girl or guy. Because there's a chance that they might not be feeling you. When dating, there's a chance that things won't work out. There's a chance uh, that my heart may be broken. When having sex, there's a chance that you could get pregnant or get someone pregnant. There's a chance that you can contract a life threatening disease. So is it worth it? Is it worth the chance? Is it worth the potential cost? First Corinthians chapter six, verse 12 says, I have the right to do anything but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. Or in other words, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Let me say that one more time. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And Pastor Shelby, Pastor Shelby, the verse even says in view of God's mercy, verse one, that I could do this. So God's going to have mercy on me when I, when I do this anyway. So why not? I mean, he's going to forgive me, right? Yes. God has given us grace and mercy, but just because we have it doesn't mean we abuse it. Because when you're dating someone, you don't want them taking advantage of your love, so why would you take advantage of God's? When you submit yourself to doing things that you probably shouldn't, you run the risk or the chance of those things becoming your master as opposed to submitting yourself to the master. And so I wanna challenge you, I wanna challenge you today that in this life, you ought to have a mamba mentality, which means I'm always pushing the envelope and trying to be the best version of oneself. And the only guaranteed way to do that is by submitting myself to God, by submitting my body to God, by submitting my mind to the master. Because the text says when I do that, verse two, I'll be able to experience God's good, pleasing, and perfect will for my life. Dating is good. Dating can be pleasing, but it's not perfect. Sex is good. God created it. Uh, sex is pleasing and it's to be enjoyed in a marriage, but even then, it's not perfect. And so why not submit yourself to something and someone 
that is. But why? Why? Because he did it for you. Christ literally presented his body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. So that you would no longer have to be conformed to the pattern or sentence of this world, but instead be forever transformed. And so like Paul in this verse, I urge you, I plead with you to give it up. Give it up. Stop trying to submit everything to your will and what you think will be the perfect person and the perfect relationship or what the world says is okay and you should be doing by now and push the envelope. Do something different. Do something that others aren't willing to and give it up. Give your body and give your mind to Christ. That's the message for today. That's the message for today. I just kind of gave you guys uh, an overview, a a base. I kind of skimmed through it. But on next week, we're going to go a little bit deeper a little bit more specific to where it is you are. And I have some special friends that are going to join me in on the conversation. Have you guys seen Red Table Talk? We're going to have some next week. Next Saturday, 7 o'clock, same time, same place, right here on Reju TV. God bless you guys. God keep you. Ooh-wee, what a challenging word. I wish someone would have shared that with me when I was y'all's age. We want to invite you guys to connect with us, so be sure to subscribe here to our Res Youth TV YouTube page, and also check us out on Instagram at Res Student Ministry, so you guys can stay up to date with everything we have going on. Here at Res Student Ministry, we believe in sharing the love of God and sharing our walk with others. So we're doing just that by hosting a shoe drive. If you guys didn't get a chance to give this morning, please send us an email at youth at myrbconline.com or just text the word here to 830-689-8074 and we'll reach out to you. Again, we're looking for brand new athletic shoes for the youth. But it's spring break, y'all. So, of course, we have some fun things in store for you that we think you'll enjoy. So check out our social media page for more information. All right, that's all I have for you today. Be sure to return for our next youth service next Saturday at 7 right here on YouTube. And remember, we must share God's word, share God's love, and share our walk. Have a blessed week. See you soon.